Good morning, YouTube. Uh, today I'm in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, and I am about to visit the museum ship Valley Camp. It's a uh, retired ore hauler, and uh, it's a uh, maritime museum. So let's go inside and check this out. So to get an idea of scale, this is the ship that I'm on right now and the, they've gotten a little bit bigger. Now the ship was a, uh, fired by coal. This is the, the coal bunker. You can see the sloping sides. And it would hold 300 tons of coal. And that would feed down down to down here where they would be able to shovel them into the uh, boilers. There's the uh, the engine, steam engine. You can see the coupling down here that would go down basically to down to the uh, drive shaft, drive the propeller. We also had a uh, steam powered generators to go electric. And this would have been the steam powered steer unit which would have been hooked to the, the rudder. And uh, would have been connected to the wheel of the pilot house. Shaft would have been for the rudder, and there's the, the shaft that goes up to the pilot house, which is weird. So, this would have been the quarters of the second and third mate. And the uh, second mate is the deck officer charged during the 12 to 4 watch, and he's responsible for all the navigation. The third mate is charged from the 8 to 12 watch, he's responsible for the care and maintenance of life saving and firefighting equipment. Snug little cabin, nothing spacious, but so this is where the uh, the crew quarters. You get an idea. Two of the crew would share each of these rooms, and uh, right next door was the uh, welcome to the bridge. The uh, the helm is connected uh, all the way back to the stern where you saw that uh, the unit. I got radar over there, which during the day, easier to see if you, it's crowded. And you got one on either side for the, uh, connected to the engine room for the two different engines. Uh, and you've got uh, the compass. That's electronic repeater, but this one down here is, is your basic manual one. And uh, over here is a radio direction finder. So if you're caught in the fog and you're trying to figure out which way uh, something is, uh, you can use that to find uh, where a radio signal from, say, another ship is coming. And then back here behind us is the, the transceiver for the radar. And of course, you got to have uh, your chart table, which is for where we are, somewhere right up in here. So these stairs would lead down to where the, the captain's quarters are. Um, he's on duty 24 hours a day and can be called up here at any time, so he needs good access. So let's see if we can get down there. And this is, uh, may look a little bit nicer than the cruise quarters. That's because this is a guest room, so guests of the owners uh, 
for short hops or maybe even the owner. So this is a is a little nicer than the cruise quarters. And this is the, the captain's office, which is right off of his quarters. So this is the uh, the captain's quarters, and uh, I believe it connects up over there to the uh, the guest room. Um, they each have a, a private bath, but his office is right over there, and of course the stairs up to the uh, the pilot house. And crew quarters in the stern of the ship would house four in each room, as opposed to up in the bow where it's two. And this is the mess room. As you see, it it only holds like eight crew members. There's 42 on here. Uh, this is where the lower ranking crew members would eat, and uh, they eat in shifts because it just wasn't a lot of room. But I'm willing to bet that there was coffee 24 hours a day. And this is the galley. Uh, they did serve food 24 hours a day, and by the looks of it. This is where you drop off your uh, trays to be washed and brown. Nice cook stove. And this is the dining room where the officers and their guests would eat. A little nicer than the, the staff mess hall. And the, the chief steward's quarters right off of the uh, captain's dining room and uh, he was responsible for the dining room, uh, the mess hall, the galley, planning meals and um, uh, and cooking the meals. So basically uh, his job was to make sure everybody ate well and on time. To get an idea how big this is. That white thing across there, that's across one hatch. Uh, that's where the, the ramp is to get to the upper up here and down to the lower deck. But each of these would have led into uh, the cargo holds. I don't know if you can see how uneven the floor is. This is quarter inch steel plate. And when you're dumping coal and grain and rock and down through the hatches down in here, it's going to pound this. And over the years, it dented it in. On November 10th, 1975, uh, the Edmunds Fitzgerald sunk in uh, Lake Superior with all hands. And it was many years before they were actually able to find it. But they did. A few pieces washed ashore eventually in like the, uh, this lifeboat. And you can see the damage banged up on the rocks. And it's really only half a lifeboat. And uh, I'm going to have more on the Edmunds, on the Edmunds Fitzgerald um, in uh, the next place I visit in a few days. So just a little teaser. And this lifeboat, you would think, came through a little bit better, except for a huge hole and the whole rudder in the back was just ripped apart. When they did find the Edmunds Fitzgerald, uh, they put these buoys over the top of it so that the uh, Coast Guard cutter could stay on site. And, uh, but the winds are so strong that it blew these uh, down to 250 feet. And the pressure depth, or that depth, uh, just crushed. Can you imagine the, the power and the uh, Coast Guard cutter was, was blown off, of course. Well, that's going to end my, uh, my visit here to the Museum Ship Valley Camp and a uh, very interesting place. A lot of history of uh, shipping and uh, in the Great Lakes and in this area. And uh, there's a lot more I didn't show you. So uh, if you get up here to Sault Ste. Marie, it's worth stopping to take a visit. All right. See you later, YouTube. I'm going to get on the road and see where it takes me.